Now let's move on to discuss the oral cavity and the esophagus, as well as the pharynx, which is the connection between these two. The first part of the digestive system is the oral cavity. Let's use this diagram to describe the anatomy in this region. At the top is the nasal cavity. Under that is the hard palate, which is connected to the soft palate. The cheek, then the tongue, the body of the tongue, and more posterior, the root of the tongue. Underneath the tongue is the higher bone. Behind the tongue is the epiglottis and oral pharynx. And superior to the oral pharynx is the nasal pharynx. The oral cavity is also known as the buccal cavity. It's lined with oral mucosa. And this forms a ridge, which are the gums, near the teeth. The soft and hard palate form the roof of the oral cavity. The tongue forms the floor of the oral cavity. The hard palate separates the oral and nasal cavities from each other. The soft palate separates and closes off the nasal pharynx region during swallowing. Within the oral cavity are the tongue and teeth. The tongue functions in the following way. It moves food in the mouth, which assists in chewing. It also senses temperature and taste. The tongue secretes an enzyme to help with fat digestion. On the surface of the tongue are papillae, in which contain the taste buds. The tongue can be divided into anterior or oral portion and a posterior root or pharyngeal portion. On the underside of the tongue is the frenulum, and this connects the tongue to the oral mucosa. This diagram shows the different types of teeth in the oral cavity. In the center are the central incisors. Next to them are the lateral incisor, followed by a premolar and a molar. The teeth are for chewing, which break up the food. The tongue moves the food over the teeth for this process. The majority of a tooth is made of dentin with a pulp cavity inside. There is also a dental artery and vein and nerve which passes up through the pulp cavity. The functions of the different teeth. The incisors are shaped like a blade and can be used to cut food. The molars are large and flat used for crushing and grinding food. Also in the oral cavity are the salivary glands. Let's describe the anatomical location of these glands. The sublingual gland and the submandibular gland. The parotid gland and the associated parotid duct. Each of the three salivary glands produce a slightly different type of saliva. Saliva is made up of water plus a small amount of ions, buffers, metabolites, and an enzyme. The parotid glands are the largest salivary glands, and they're located in an area posterior to the mandibular ramus and anterior and inferior to the ear. The sublingual glands are located underneath the mucous membrane of the floor of the mouth. The submandibular glands are located in the floor of the mouth along the medial surfaces of the mandible bone and these glands contribute approximately 70% of the saliva in the mouth. Now let's describe the processes involved in swallowing. This is a complex event that's coordinated by the swallowing center in the brain stem. And during it, food passes to the pharynx, into the esophagus, and eventually into the stomach. Swallowing can be divided in three phases, the oral phase or buccal phase, the pharyngeal phase, and the esophageal phase. Let's first begin with the oral phase. Initially, the food bolus is moved to the back of the tongue. When this happens, it triggers stimulating touch receptors in the pharynx. Next, the anterior of the tongue lifts to the hard palate and forces the bolus into the pharynx. 
Following that, the posterior portion of the tongue is lifted, which closes the nasopharynx in preparation for swallowing. This prevents food from entering the nasal passages. Finally, the food bolus is propelled to the pharynx by an anterior to posterior movement of the tongue. The second phase of swallowing is the pharyngeal phase. During this phase, the larynx is pulled forward and upward under the tongue by muscular action. As the larynx rises, the epiglottis moves backwards and downwards to seal off the glottis. The upper esophageal sphincter opens and the bolus of food then moves into the esophagus. Once the food bolus moves into the esophagus, next is the esophageal phase. During this phase, the food bolus is pushed through the esophagus towards the stomach and this occurs by contractions known as peristalsis. The muscle fibers just above the bolus contract. This constricts the esophageal wall and pushes the bolus downward. These contractions proceed in a wave pushing the bolus towards the stomach. Eventually the lower esophageal sphincter relaxes and this facilitates the bolus moving into the stomach from the esophagus. After the oral cavity is the esophagus within the digestive system. Let's now look at the structure of the esophagus. The esophagus is a hollow muscular tube that delivers food from the oral cavity into the stomach while passing through the lower esophageal sphincter. The esophagus is approximately 25 centimeters or 12 inches in length and about 2 centimeters in diameter. Here's the histology of the esophagus, the mucosa, submucosa, and muscularis. Also, there's the adventitia, or the outer layer. Within the mucosa is the muscularis mucosa. Within the submucosa are the esophageal glands. Striated muscle and smooth muscle are within the muscularis layer. The wall of the esophagus has the following layers. The mucosa, which includes an abrasion epithelium. B. Esophageal folds, which are made up of mucosa and submucosa, and these allow for expansion. C. A smooth muscle layer. D. The esophageal glands would produce mucus for lubrication. And E. The muscularis externa. This contains circular and longitudinal involuntary muscle layers. Here's a clinical note on GERD or gastroesophageal reflux disease based on this section of the tutorial. GERD is a common chronic disease and the symptoms of it include heartburn, trouble swallowing and sometimes pain when swallowing. GERD can be caused by a weakened lower esophageal sphincter a transient sphincter relaxation, and a hiatal hernia. Shown in the top right is the diaphragm and the esophageal hiatus through which the esophagus passes. A hiatal hernia is caused by the stomach moving above the diaphragm or when part of the stomach herniates through the esophageal hiatus. Both of these can lead to stomach acid entering and irritating the lower region of the esophagus. Treatment for GERD includes diet changes, medication for sphincter tone, and in some cases, surgery.